Hello and welcome to this tutorial series on SimSig, which is a set of software that mimics the signalling control centres found in Britain that control most of the country. And the software that you're going to see here, some of it is available for free download. Some of it is available as donationware, which means if you enjoy it, you can just make a donation to pay for some of it. And some of it requires a license, which costs some money. Uh, and that's usually dependent on both how new the simulation is and also whether it's one of the bigger simulations or one of the smaller ones. So in this first video, I just want to give a very brief overview of what we're looking at when we open up a SimSig window. And I've chosen for this video Aston, which is a single screen. You can see it here. Uh, it doesn't quite fit on my laptop monitor, but um, if you had a larger screen, it would fit all on a single page. And so probably you've already realized that the gray lines are basically tracks and the red bars are where the trains are. Each train has a head code and that head code is printed on the top and carried along automatically. And then we have the signals. Some of them are grayed out and the gray signals, depending on what your options are set to, mean that if you have no control over the signal, then it just shows as gray because you don't care what color it's showing. Any signal that you do have control over, you will see the color it's currently displaying, yellow, green, red, and on some simulations, double yellow. So that's in terms of signaling. You will also see shunt signals. They're these small triangle ones. If you've been on the trains in the UK, in Britain, you will have seen these along the track and they are, allow, are to allow the trains to make slow movements in directions that are not usual for normal traffic operations, but which are sometimes used for uh, reversing trains, for getting around obstructions on the track, those kinds of things. Um, and what we'll, we'll look at at future videos is how these signals actually control the way that these trains move through the signaling area. Now, when you get to the fringes, to the edges of your simulation, you'll see a number of different things. So here we have tracks and you notice these tracks are shown as hollow gray lines. So they're not solid gray like this, they're hollow. And that's because this is a different signal box. So this area here, this junction is controlled in this case by Birmingham New Street. If we right click a signal, we'll see New Street 62. So we have no control over that. We only see the trains once they arrive here. And once we've sent a train in that direction, we can forget about it. So that's one of the things we'll see at the edges. We'll also see here a bay platform. So this is really a set of buffer stops and we can send a train from that signal into that platform. And then as we go further along, so you see these letters here, you'll see at the bottom we have letter B and that means that the line continues up here. And as we go further along, you'll then see the letter A, which comes up to the top here. And as we move along, you see this, which is a siding. The siding again has a hollow track and that's because there are no track circuits on the siding. So once a train goes into that siding, we lose visibility of it. Uh, the only way we'll know that it wants to come out again is either the train will appear here on a piece of track circuited track with a number and it will look a bit like this. Or we might get a telephone call from the people who run the siding telling us that the train's ready to leave. Similarly, this is another carriage siding here, um, ACE sidings, I'm not sure what ACE is, maybe a company. Um, and then when we come down here, we'll see a junction which goes down to, in this case, Litchfield low level. And we don't really need to know what that is right now. But you'll notice this is a bi-directional line. So you'll see there are two arrows. You can come either out of this junction or you can send a train into this junction. And again, that's hollow because once the train reaches there, it now belongs to another signal box. When we get to the far end here, we have the same kind of idea. The track has gone from a double track down to a single track. And then here in this case, Derby signal box is in charge of the line once the trains pass here. One thing that you'll notice on this simulation, which is not on every simulation, you'll notice there are some hollow tracks here 
in the middle of our control area. And that's because this is a line that is only used for freight and for empty coaching stock. It's never had track circuits fitted to it, which means that once a train goes into this area, uh, the train disappears from our view. And then when it finally arrives here, it reappears back on our simulation. Now, we'll talk about that in a different video. There's a whole load of signaling equipment that we need to use here and here to send trains over. But all you need to know is a hollow track means that we can't see trains when they go onto those tracks. Um, otherwise, we see the trains when they're on the grey lines. Um, and again, we see the head code here, which tells us what service it is. Two more things to mention in this video. The first is you've probably guessed that these are stations. Most of them will be named on the simulation. So Litchfield City, Litchfield Trent Valley. You see all the other names of the stations here. And you'll notice that some of them also have platform numbers. They have platform numbers if it's important. So for Butler's Lane, it's not important. If a train stops there, it stops there. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's not a problem. But we'll find that places like Blake Street... In the morning, we'll have an empty coaching stock train that will come in from this direction and we click on it and it will tell us it's actually going into platform two, which is not a normal platform for these trains to go into. But in the morning, a train will go onto platform two. So if the platform number is important and if it's mentioned in the timetable, uh, we see the timetable when we click on these and we see platform numbers here. If the platform number is mentioned then you will see the platform number mentioned on the stations. In this case, Four Oaks, Litchfield City, Litchfield Trent Valley and Blake Street are the only platforms where that matters. And another thing to note here is level crossings. We'll look at level crossings in a different video. Needless to say, they show us an orange bar that goes across and there's different types of level crossings. If they have tell next to it means it's a telephone one so normally you don't need to worry about it but sometimes people will call you and ask you if they can cross the level crossing safely <clears throat> if you see a crossing like this you'll see it has ahb which means automatic half barrier and again it means the crossing itself is automatic but you get some indications to say whether the barriers are raised whether they're lowered or working uh, or whether they failed and if they failed that's a different issue which we'll look at in a later video so that's a general overview of what your simulation looks like another thing that might be obvious but it's worth mentioning is these uh, diagrams are not to scale so the fact that there's the same distance between there and there and butler's lane and blake street doesn't mean that the distance is the same in that case there's only actually one signaling block between those two stations so they're probably much closer together. Whereas if we look here, there are three blocks or two blocks uh, between those stations. So this is a diagram. It's a schematic. It's not an accurate measure of distance. And one of the things that you'll learn as you start to use the simulations is that especially when you talk about um, inclines where trains are going up a hill or down a hill, you will learn how long that it takes trains to get between certain stations uh, and so it doesn't necessarily match with what you expect. You might see a short distance and the train might take a very long time to get there because it's going up the hill. So that's really a basic overview of what all of the simulations will have on them. We will look at some more specifics on this simulation and other simulations as we go along. But hopefully this is enough just to get you comfortable with the basic screens. And in the next video, we're going to look at the different menus that you can bring up once you're actually running SimSick. Any questions or comments, please put them below.